Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Malachi Caltip. We're gonna bring you another game of StarCraft 2. And tonight my opponent will be Arcanian. So I'm gonna go right into this match. Kinda cool, I just spent the last, I wanna say, four or five hours playing Nazi Zombies on Call of Duty Black Ops. And you know, I was a huge zombie fan back in World at War. And I just gotta say, it's incredibly fun. You know, one of the new maps. Um, I can't remember which one it is, but it's the one that's in the Nazi theater for anyone that's watching and has watched the video. <laughs> Excuse me, nasty burp. Anyway, and that's just an incredibly fun map, and it's just cool because it plays so much differently than the other zombie games. All the mechanics are there, everything is still the same, but the fact that you're constantly moving, you're not just camping, and the way that me and my buddy were playing is we were moving up and we were basically laddering up, where we would run around the corner and I would post at the corner, kill zombies until they got close to me, run and he would kill the zombies, you know, coming after me as I ran, as I reloaded, and it just made for, you know, some really good, you know, good team gameplay. But anyway, you guys are here to watch StarCraft, not to want hear about Nazi zombies, so Metropolis, Malachi Cowtipper, Red Zerg, Arcanian, or Icarnian, I like Arcanian better. Yeah, whatever. Arcadian! From 300. Nope. Arcanian, Blue Protoss, middle, left-hand corner, Metropolis. So, my overlord is telling me no base over here, and I know the base is not over here, so what this is going to let me do is comfortably fast expand on this map. And right at about that time when I got the second base scouted is right when I hit about that 14 supply, which is kind of where you want to know what your early build order will be, because, you know, you really don't want to lay that spawning pool down late, if, you know, your enemy is here or here, just because it's not that big of a rush distance, but over this way, able to get my drone in without any problems, spot the gateway, see that there's no other gateways going up, and I'm actually going to set this guy to move, you know, kind of all over the place, and you really want to scout this back area back here and just make sure they're not trying to hide any tech on you. So, pylon goes up over here, my expand goes down at 16, my hatch, will, I mean, my gas will go down over here at 15, and then a pool will follow right behind it, that allows me to easily transi transition stream to speed, get roaches right away, kind of do whatever I really decide I'm going to do. If we check out the income tab right now, he is ahead by two harvesters because I had to stop drone production to do my buildings. But looking back at the production tab right now, I've got two, two drones coming out, which should definitely help even the playing field. And he's just continuing to train up probes, and that's just one of the nice things about Protoss and Terran early game is they can continue to train their units or their probes, their SCVs, well, us poor Zergs have to sacrifice that early game larva, which only comes once every 10 seconds for our tech, for our early Zerglings. You know, pre-Queen, we are incredibly vulnerable, which is why I think early pressure does so good against a Zerg, but... What I'm able to do right here, I see the cyber core going up. So my goal right now is to keep this drone alive for as long as humanly possible. Because what he's probably going to have to do is rush a stalker out right away. Just to deal with the fact that my drone is in the base. And although it's not that big of a deal that my drone is over there, I can spot everything that he's doing. And I'm paying attention to his base because there's really nothing exciting going on at mine right now. He's still ahead of me by two harvesters production. I've got a queen and six lings coming out. And these six lings are just going to be for early defense in case he decides to push out with his... A lot or two, and maybe poke up at this wall and make sure, you know, see if he hasn't walled it off. You can always get lucky. But, and then this, another gateway going down, and he may be holding off, you know, to hide his tech. He's at 100 out of 100 chroma boost, and I can see that. And that really makes me think that he's trying to do something tricky. So, a pylon goes down back here, and usually the enemy will not lay a pylon down back there unless they mean to do something sneaky, sneaky with it. But right here, my drone is going to meet his fate. Oh, look at the guts everywhere, just guts all over the place. And I probably could have kept for a lot longer, but I need to get my attention back to my base. So I have speed going down right now. If we look at the production tab, income, income tab, I'm ahead by one harvester. And I have a second queen going down out here because I want to start the production cycle. I want to get this up and running as soon as possible. So now that I'm out of there, there goes the Chrono Boost on the warp gate. And he's just going to be continuing to push out units right here. We have a robo facility, so we have a two-gate robo going down. And this is what he was waiting for. He was waiting, you know, to get my worker out of the base before he laid this robo bay down. So you have to imagine, he probably delayed that for a good 30, 40 seconds just to deal with the fact that a worker in a base. It's a huge thing that you can do. Not very APM intensive, but because I, when I, my worker died, I only saw two gateways. I immediately threw down an Evo Chamber, and I'll actually be getting at least one Spore Crawler at each one of my expansions, just in case. I'm connecting the creep right now, so you can see I'm actually preparing for a Phoenix play. 
and right now he's actually going to has a pretty sizable little group of zealots out. If we're looking at that, six zealots means I need at least 24 lings, and if we look at that, I've got 10 lings. I mean, that would just be absolute... They're chew toys for the Protoss at that point. So, he's ahead. Nope, never mind. I'm ahead. Haha. <laughs> Zergo P powers FTW. So, <laughs> look at this. His warp gate is up right now, and he's training an observer, which is a good move by him, and there goes an immortal. So, looking at the production tab right here, Immortals have 55 second build time, that's just a little crazy. And, wow, I did not realize those units were that insanely expensive, that's ridiculous. And God for Protoss stuff costing so much. But I'm able to escape with all but one of my Lings, one of them probably just got taken out, and right now I'm pumping out a few Roaches, and going up here, I did not spot an Immortal, so seeing that hardcore Zealot up little group of zealots up there, I'm definitely going to want to throw some roaches down. And his observer's coming in, but he's not going to be able to do too terribly much. He will, more than likely, see my spire. Yep, he knows that my spire is down, but detection and my queen definitely shut down that scout. So we have a pylon going to be going up over here as he prepares a proxy and ice cream stand and is going to get ready to push out probably once he has a second immortal, is what I would assume is going to be going down with this. So... We're going to see how I'm going to be able to deal with that, because I'm continuing to pump roaches. Now, one mistake that I could make is having too many roaches, and him having a few mortals that are out in the background. If you look at that 50 damage to armored units with 5 range, these guys are just sick. And we have charge going down for the zealots, so that is going to make them incredibly effective at clearing the distance. They get exponentially better at taking out zerglings at that point, because they can just get to them, and they don't get surrounded as easily. And then it makes... Kiting with Roach is very difficult, but the creep is going out, and every little advantage, again, that you can get is going to be helpful. Now, the income tab right here, we're still pretty even, and looking at this, now this is something I have noticed that pro players, by 9 minutes in the game, they have like 40 harvesters, which is just ridiculous, so I think I focus just a little bit too much on early game unit production, and maybe not enough on getting some harvesters out on the field, but I am trying to get some more, especially on gas, because I'm going to be trying to push some mutas out right about now, so... My changeling just died over in his base, and it's because of this changeling that I know that he has immortals out on the field. So looking at the production tab, 14 units worth of zerglings are an immediate response to those immortals. Going back to the income right now, I'm going to start to pull ahead. I'm at 34 harvesters, continuing to train more of them right now, and Brandy, leave the pizza alone. I've got a very greedy golden retriever who thinks she can just walk up and eat just about anything. She's cute, so I love her, but... Looking at this right now, I have a few mutas out on the field. There goes a forge, more mutas, and overseers being morphed just in case there's going to be some DTs. Now, just I'm trying to prepare because I kind of got an idea that a push will be coming soon. So, very heavy in the charge lots, no stalkers there. And with the immortals on the field, you know, two mutas does not have the DPS to deal with a large group of troops. They could easily just steamroll my base. But if I can have six or seven mutas out on the field, they will not be able to touch them, and it's really going to force him to pull back on this attack. So Blink is on the way, another gateway, getting ready to go, and taking a look at this, I'm trying to get my Zerglings up and around over by the Immortals as well, but as we can see, there's just so many freaking charge lots there. It's not even funny, I'm going to isolate this Immortal and take him out over there. And these Z lots are going to get back here, and they're going to start working away at the drones, so I'm going to pull them back, and the Mutalisks just really being my saving grace right now because the roaches just got rolled over, you know, the immortals doing their job, the zealots doing their job at just massacring the lings, and right now these zealots just continuing to go to work on my harvester count, 39 to 28, but not having the stalkers there is really coming to bite him right now, because these mutas are just going to be very easily going to be able to clean this up, although my queen, oh, she goes down and she cannot inject before she dies. That is a tragedy. You fought well, noble queen, but your babies will be safe. So looking at this, he's sending in three more zealots, and these guys, they're basically going to be going to their death. You know, absolutely surrounded, nothing they can really do, not even able to get any scouting information. So I am able to maintain a pretty good lead in my harvester count. My expansion is up, and that attack did not do what it was intended to do. It's going to be very hard for him to stop my counter push that I will be preparing very shortly here for him. So, in response, he's getting another mortal, two stalkers, and a zealot. He's probably trying to balance himself out a little bit better, and more than likely face palming a little bit, because having, you know, maybe one less immortal and having six stalkers on the field could have really benefited him. But, again, without the immortals there, you know, 
and with all the lots, it probably still went to win over as well because I do believe I had the bigger army at this point in the game. So I'm sending my troops out now. I'm not actually rallying my troops over to that point because I am not fully prepared to commit to this attack just in case there's a lot of troops on the ground. If we look at this right here, I'm just going to get my mutas in range, bring them back, and very easy to pick off that small little group of troops right there. These stalkers just are not going to be enough as far as that goes, and I'm not going to have too bad of a time getting rid of this attack, but there's a few cannons here, which will definitely help, you know, discourage my mutilisk attack, and I've just at this point have too many mutas in the sky, and he will not be able to drop enough, you know, he can drop four stalkers at a time, but I've got eight mutas, and if I, especially if I can catch them warping in, like right there, three units worth of stalkers, they're just simply not going to be able to do that much, and actually, the cannon's going to scare me away a little bit right there, and... At this point, I really do not want to follow these stalkers into the cannons, because I do not want to throw my mutas away. My zerglings I could care less about. The mutas are the units that are kind of important to me, but as we can see with the reinforcements, it's just really not looking good for them at this point. So, just going to focus these guys down right there. And now that the cloud has gotten a lot bigger, I'm actually just going to go straight for these cannons. You know, take these guys out. And there's really nothing standing in between him and me right now in this game. And this is one of the reasons right here with his little comment that I'm bringing this game up to YouTube. You know, ugh, mutas are so difficult to deal with. Now, this is just as a Zerg player, I very rarely play Protoss, but it seems to me that all it takes to shut down mutas is having four or five phoenixes in the air. Hello! And, you know, some good control over your stalkers. And basically speaking, just applying earlier pressure, he should have been expanding behind that attack right there, that expansion could have been up, he could have migrated drones, and just really he let me get ahead of him economically, and then when the attack did not have the desired consequences, it came way too late in the game, that attack should have came at like 9 minutes in the game, or at least early pressure should have, but it came at like 14, so overall, it was a good game, but when the attack failed, there was really nothing he could do to stop me at that point, I had a third up and running, and probably just you know, need some better play, but I was pretty well aware of what he was doing, and good scouting, again, is something I cannot stress enough as to how you can win games, so thank you very much for watching. This is Malachi Cowtipper, signing out.